Tonight at 11. The NBC Television Network. I'm sorry, I'm late for the exam. I overslept. This is crazy, but I don't remember where I sit. Do you know where I sit? I need a pencil. Does anybody have a pencil? Hola, Nikki. Come on. I need a pencil. I need my exam. Somebody give me my exam. I can't do this. I only got two hours. got six minutes. Hola, What's going on here? Bésame, bésame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la can't be happening. Somebody help me, please. Nikki? Mom, what are you doing here? Help me, please. Hola, Nikki. <laughs> having a nightmare about taking the Spanish midterm. I must be going nuts. I don't even take Spanish. <laughs> hey, you're okay now. You just fell asleep at your desk. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. I'm fine. Everything is good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna flunk my exams. I know it. Oh, come on, Nick. You've been studying real hard. You'll I do can't great. do it. Come on. I got all these subjects. History, English, physics. I should have taken something I'm good at. Something like lunch. <laughs> well, look, it's late. Just, just go to bed. No. I'm up now. I'll splash some water on my face, and uh, I'll hit the books. <laughs> what the hell am I doing? Hola, Nikki. <laughs> My accent, that bad? <laughs> Some anxiety. Next week is our midterm. Oh, oh, no. No. Yes, Sheldon. Is it pass fail, number grades, percentiles, or letters? I just put little stars on your forehead. <laughs> Nick? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. To tell you the truth, I'm a little shaky about this whole exam thing. Oh, Nick, every freshman goes through that. Yeah, but when I left the Marines to come to college, 
If all my buddies says, hey, you're going to fail. You know, you've been out of school so long, it's going to be hard to go back. What if they're right? Nobody cares more about school than you do. I know that. Now, come on, you're going to do fine. I hope so. Look, I know some exercises that can really help you relieve tension. Would you like me to teach you one? I can't do that. Why not? Because tension's the only thing that's holding me together right now. <laughs> <laughs> come on, let's try one. Sit down. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. All right, now grab the ends of the desk. Yeah, now start to apply some steady pressure. Just feel that tension just move right out of your body into the desk. Good. That's it. Yeah, good. Do I have to pay for this? Buenos dias, Senor Smith. Como esta usted, Sheldon? Muy bien, Senor Smith. Heat this guy, Smith. Gravity. The irresistible force that pulls all objects downward to the earth. And I defy it every day. Don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Don't know much about a science book. Ooh, I don't know much about the French I took. Over what door is the quote? Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. McDonald's. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's over the gateway to hell in Dante's Inferno. Does anybody know how you measure wind speed? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Beaufort scale. It's named after Sir Francis Beaufort. Thanks, and I hate you. <laughs> Matthew, I'm gonna need a little help with my history. Would you mind? Sure. Uh, what historical period? From the Big Bang till now. <laughs> Look, we're all in the same history class, right? Why don't we form a study group? Nah, I study it all I need to study. <laughs> so it'll be even more fun to study with you guys. Good. Oh, great. I just washed off all my calculus notes. <laughs> All right, guys, we've got exactly 12 hours before the exam. Let's hit the books. You're just unwrapping uh, your history book now? I meant to unwrap it for months, but life just got in the way. <laughs> Nick, what happened to your book? Nothing. I used that uh, yellow highlighter to mark everything that's important. Oh, Nick, you've got to be more selective. Hey, if it's in the book, it's got to be important. <laughs> it is. I mean, you even highlighted that the name of General Lee's horse was Traveler. I mean, who cares about that? Oh, yeah? What happens if General Lee's in the middle of a big battle and he, he needs his horse to get out of there and he goes, Hey, Frankie, get over here. <laughs> now he's got a big problem, right? All right, guys, look, we got at least 200 years of history to cover. Um, how should we start? Let's see. Sheldon, come on. We're going to study here. Uh, why don't I just start by asking you guys a few questions? I might be on the exam. Everybody ready? I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. Right. Okay. Shoot the first question. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, it's a mannerism. It's just something I do when I study. You look like you're tuning in another planet. <laughs> okay. What was Seward's Folly? I got that. Uh, page 52, lower left-hand corner, Seward's Folly. Uh, 1857... Secretary of State Seward authorized the purchase of Alaska from Russia for $7.2 million and a dab of peanut butter. Peanut butter? Yeah, that was also on the page. Okay. What happened in 1861? 1861. The federal government formed a sanitary commission whose job it was to... to check under Sheldon's bed. <laughs> Come on, guys, let's get with you here. All right, in 1814... We took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. <laughs> Come on, hey, we gotta study. Okay, okay. What happened in 1892? Grover Cleveland was elected president for the second time. Right, and what was Grover Cleveland remembered for? He's the only president named after a Muppet. <laughs>
never going to forget that yarn. What are you talking about, kid? Well, for the rest of my life, I'm going to remember our first all-nighter. Hey, you know, this is kind of an intense experience that bonds men forever. We don't have to cut our fingers and rub them together, do we? <laughs> okay, I'm all set. <laughs> Sheldon, oh my God, oh my God, I fell asleep. How much time do we have? We have to go now, kid. I'm not going. I don't have a chance. I'm as good as dead. There's no way I'm leaving this room. 1836, the last words of Jim Bowie at the Alamo. <laughs> I can't take this test, Nick. Sheldon, you have to. I can't. Listen, kid, you can do it. You know this stuff. You just don't believe in yourself. And I'm right. <laughs> no, you're not. Now, what happened in 1787? 1787, 87. They signed the Constitution. Right. 1853. Uh, uh, the Gadsden Purchase. 1620. Mm. The Pyrrhons land at Plymouth Rock. Sheldon. My name. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> right. 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 In 1814, we took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. We took a little bacon and we took a little bean And we caught the bloody British in the town of New Orleans Fired our guns and <laughs> This exam will determine one-third of your final grade. It is not enough to know the facts. Your essays must be the product of a clear and logical mind. I'm dead. <laughs> no, you're not. You're okay. You're going to do fine. Dr. Pearson? Mr. Paxton. I don't think I can take this test. Well, what appears to be the problem? Well, I feel kind of hot, and itchy, and clammy, and my throat hurts, and my eyeballs feel dry. Are you currently bleeding? <laughs> no, but I have high hopes. Well, good luck with your midterm, Mr. Paxton. Nice try, pal. I especially like the dry eyeballs part. <laughs> Mr. Wiggett, would you be kind enough to hand around the examinations? I know you will do your usual exemplary job. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm really sorry. I really am as dumb as you guys. I believe the purpose of a midterm is to separate those who belong here from those who do not. Ah, Mr. Chase. Uh, Dr. Pearson, can I talk to you for a minute? Rather an odd time for a chat. I know it is, sir. Could you just come a little closer, please? You're not going to ask me to the prom, are you? <laughs> Look, I've, I've been a sergeant in the Marines for 20 years, and I learned you don't get the most out of the men by scaring them. Well, among my past students are included a congressman, two senators, and a Supreme Court justice. What does that say to you? But out. Bravo. <laughs> now you have precisely one hour and 50 minutes to complete this examination. You may begin now. You now have one hour and 49 minutes.
by a son with a blinding force. The return of the six million dollar man and the bionic woman Sunday. Hey Nick, guess what? Carl got a B on Pearson's midterms. Uh, I know it's middle class value, but I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> Yes, they're practically A's, bitch. That's great. I got a D plus. <laughs> a nice night going. What'd you get, an A? No. Come on. I didn't. Got an A minus. Let me see that. You wrote the minus in yourself. <laughs> I was just trying to get closer to you guys. I'm touched. Hey, Nick, what'd you get on the exam? Me? Hey, yeah, what'd you get? What did I get? You mean my grade? Yeah, yeah, you're great. What was it? What was it? I got a B. Hey, that's great. Way to go, Nick. I'm proud of you, man. You almost did as good as me. <laughs> Sheldon, you got a D plus. A D plus is almost a C minus. Yeah. And a C minus is practically average. And the word average begins with an A. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, hey, I'll let that celebrate tonight. Okay, uh, pizza, 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 eight o'clock. Right. You know, you should be really proud of yourself. You see, you weren't for nothing. You did great. I didn't do great. What do you mean? I failed. I flunked. I got an F. Get out. See for yourself. I can't believe it. I mean, how can you possibly fail? I mean, you studied really hard. We can't all be boy geniuses. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at me. I worked hard, and I got nowhere. It's just one test. I have to go through the rest of my life knowing Sheldon scored higher than me. <laughs> that kid forgets how to shave every morning. Well, I mean, did Pearson say anything to you? Did he write any comments or anything? Oh, yeah, he wrote plenty of stuff. I used too much useless information. I got to be more concise. Oh. You know, I just was trying to impress him with what I knew. That guy killed me. Oh, look, you, 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 you'll definitely do better on, on your next test. Hey, I'm running on empty. I need my batteries recharged, kid. I'm, I'm really not that happy with myself. Where are you going? I'm going to go home. What, to the Marines? No, to my family. You want some company? You know something? I do. Look at him, Matthew. He eats like a bird. Yes, yes, ma'am. I don't know how he stays alive. And you? You're skinny as a toothpick. Can you call yourself a genius? Matthew, use your bread to mop up the sauce. Like this, Matthew. Mm. Sure. It takes a pretty girl to get him to eat. That proves he's a genius. I'm glad his hair is gone. Because now, when I kiss him, I go right to his skin. Nicky mm. boy. College life must be agreeing with you. you. You're looking pretty good for you. My brother was always handsome, Dominic. He was so handsome, it was like a freak of nature, but not pretty. No, sir. Nicky was a real man's man. Oh, but the girls loved him, too. Loved him. They worshipped him. They used to hide in the bushes and jump out and kiss him. Before we were married, you used to do that to me. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> Now you're home, I wanted to come by and say hello. Hey, mm, Paisan, hey, look at this face. Is this guy a dead ringer for D Martin or what? Buggy, <laughs> this is Nikki's roommate at college, Matthew. Hello, Matthew. How you doing? Buggy. No, no, I just ate. I'm stuck. <laughs> Man, you say Margot, Bussy Bell. What did she say? She said, eat, you're skinny, but you're beautiful. I'm not pretty. <laughs> you want some sausage, Augie? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, uh, yeah, Augie, you, I want your lunch bread. Could you pan some mouth? Pass his mouth. Hey, wait, 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 wait. I, I want to make a toast to Nikki. Make it short. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Augie. This man has been a great friend. No, 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 he's been more than a friend. He's been a friend 
and a brother. He's a frother. <laughs> you have to keep quiet now, Wogie. You're getting a little weird. More cannelloni, Matthew? I made it myself. If you made it, I bet it's good. Oh. Hey, Nick, he's only been with you a couple of months. He's got all your moves. Pretty soon, Matthew, you'll be thinking about a family of your own. Hey, don't mind your mother. I was only 18 when I married your grandfather. God rest his soul. One year later, we had Nicky. Mm. Have you seen his baby pictures? Boy, he was a cute kid. All babies are cute. Mm. <laughs> he was handsome. The handsomest baby in the whole hospital, but not pretty. No, sir, Nicky was a real baby's baby. Oh, he still has that baby face. You know how most babies' heads come to a point? Nikki's head was perfectly round. Looked just like a baby's bottom. <laughs> you couldn't tell his head from his behind. He still cares. <laughs> and was he smart? When he was seven months old, he could say the Pledge of Allegiance. When he was five months old, he could talk. When he was three months old, he could burp in syllables. <laughs> now that's a genius. All I know, he was the smartest kid on the block. On the block? Nicky was the smartest kid in the whole neighborhood. He had brains coming out of his ears. Just one thing he could do that would make him completely perfect. He could eat a little more for his mother. <laughs> okay. I can go back to school now. It's about time. Mr. Chase, is it not? That's right, sir. I'm on my way to my biology midterm. I'm going to ace this one. How plucky. You know, your midterm was only one-third of my grade. I still got two-thirds to do better. Are you telling me you're not dropping my course? Me? I shall return General Douglas MacArthur, 1942. <laughs> I would tell you more, only I learned to be concise. Find out what it means to me. R-E-F-E-C-T. Take care, T-C-B. Oh, no. Just a little respect. Oh, no. Just a little respect now. Roomies, we'll be right back. What I got from my mother? Dear Nikki and Maddie, a little bite for the two handsomest boys in the universe, but not pretty. <laughs> Love, Mom. Hey, you know, I really like your family. Me, too. I just couldn't get over how much everybody was hugging and kissing each other, even the men. <laughs> What's the big deal if you like somebody? Don't they hug and kiss in your family? Only the dogs. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Someday you're going to have your own family and you do what you want. Yeah, right. Hey, Paisan. <laughs> Next, it's the amazing story that touched America's heart. John Lithgow only has love for a priceless doll. Then, Miami Vice. Hello, this is Sandra Santiago. Tonight on a special two-hour Miami Vice, Zito takes on the fight of his life to nail a ruthless bookie. But when the sting goes bad, will our buddy go down to the count? It's Miami Vice you'll never forget. 